I mean, appreciation moment here for this pastry. It's flaky and light. The only way to make a perfect samosa is to perfect the dough. So let's do it, my friends. Let's make my version of Indian samosas. The dough is the most important thing. For the dough, you want to start off with low protein or what's called cake flour. This is really important because this is what's going to help to give you that really lovely, crumbly, flaky texture. Now add in some salt and some ghee, and then you just kind of like mix everything together and then start using your fingers to rub it together until you get this kind of like sandy, pebbly texture. Add in some water, start off with half a cup first and then just mix that around, use your hands and just keep mixing until it comes together. If it feels a bit dry, you could add a little bit more water, just like a teaspoon at a time. But once you get to this kind of texture, then you can tip it out onto your workbench and just like kind of fold it around. You don't really need to knead it so much as just kind of like push it together until it forms a flaky firm dough. Now pop that back into your mixing bowl, cover that with a damp tea towel so it doesn't dry out too much. And you just need to set it aside for like 10 minutes or so. For the filling, you want to cut your potatoes into large chunks. If they're small little cubes, then your potato will break down and get all watery. So pop those into boiling water and cook them until they're just tender. So the other really important part about this kind of samosa is the filling. If the filling is bland, it's all just going to be horrible. <laughs> no other way to put it. So you need the spices to really pop. Now the way you do that is to roast them fresh. Well, some of them anyway. I have this beautiful array of spices here. I'm going to start off with some whole coriander seeds. And yes, I'm going to take the time to dry roast each whole spice separately because if you put them all in together, they all kind of burn and cook at different times. And if they're burnt, they will taste bitter. So don't do that. So once the coriander seeds smell really beautiful and you get just a light amount of smoke, then you can pop them into your mortar and keep going with the spices. Put your arjuan seeds in, toast those up into the mortar, cumin seeds, fennel seeds, fenugreek seeds, and then once you've got all the whole spices in there, just grind them to like a medium coarse powder. Not too fine. I kind of want little chunks of spice to bite into while I'm eating my samosa. Now, if you have a fancy mortar and pestle like I do, then you can just take the base out and tip out your spices very easily. Where did you get that mortar and pestle? Yeah, funny you should ask, Dax. <laughs> I designed this mortar and pestle myself. It is taller so the spices don't jump out, which was such a bugbear of mine before. And it's easier to clean because you can it's not as heavy to move around. Anyway, I love it. So to my fresh spice mix here, I'm gonna add a few more ground spices. So some ground coriander, Kashmiri chili powder, turmeric, and some garam masala, which itself is also a spice blend. At this point, your potatoes should be ready. So just check, insert a knife through the center, and if they're really soft, then they're good to go. Drain them, drain them really well so they're not watery, put them into a bowl and use a fork just to kind of coarsely mash them. I don't want any kind of purees here, just a nice chunky mash. And then we also need some aromatics here. So just heat up some vegetable oil, add in some garlic, some chili, a little bit of finely grated ginger, and just give that like a toss around in the hot oil. I don't want the garlic to color or burn. Then add in some curry leaves. Now you can find them at an Asian grocery store. You can also get dried curry leaves. They have a lovely flavor. If you can't find them, just leave them out. I don't want any color on the garlic. So just as it's softened and everything starts to smell really nice, then you can pour that into your potato, add in your spice mix from before and some salt. Give that a mix and finally just add in some lemon juice for a little bit more pep and that's your filling. So we're getting to the part that gets a little tricky. Don't worry, we'll do it together. We're gonna do the rolling and the folding. So let's take a look at our dough here. Pop it out onto your bench and just to make it easier to divide up, just squish it into like an oblong shape and you want six even pieces here. Now the key here is to keep your dough from drying out. So you wanna cover it with a damp tea towel while you're making your samosas. Take one of your little portions here and roll it out into, I'd say like it's like a, a long oblong oval kind of shape, just like this. Cut it in half and now we're at the kind of tricky part. So you're probably gonna to wanna to replay this multiple times, but that's okay because that's 
that's kind of what I did as well. So take one piece and then you want to put the flat edge sort of near your fingertips. Get some water and just moisten the flat edge and curl it around to form a cone, just like an ice cream cone. Hold that cone in your fist and then spoon in the filling. Now we want to do the folding. So moisten all the edges again with a little bit of water. Take the larger flap of dough, pull it over onto the side and squish it to the other side. Take the other side, squish that one over and kind of fold the dough seam over on itself. As long as everything is sealed up, then you're good to go. You can have samosas that are a triangle shape, completely different pastry, but this one in particular has this kind of shape. And just keep going until you've got 12 really cute samosas. Once you have an adorable plate of samosas, I mean, look how cute they are. And that pastry, it already looks flaky and light. Now, just before we fry these guys, I'm gonna make a really simple green chutney here. So you take a whole bunch of coriander, a whole bunch of mint, pop it into your blender, along with some green chili, natural yogurt, some salt, lemon juice, and then blend that to a nice fine consistency, just like this. To cook your samosas, we're gonna deep fry them in hot oil. I'm using my Mako wok because I'm always deep frying in my Mako wok. The other key thing when you're frying your samosas is because we have a very generous samosa, a nice big heavy filled samosa, they will sit on the bottom of your pan. So you do wanna keep them moving around, tend to them like they're your little babies so that they don't get dark kind of hot spots or burnt spots on them. Once your samosas look like this, beautifully golden and lovely all over, then you can just pull them out and drain them on some paper towel. Okay, so here we are. We have our samosas and our chutney. And I mean, oh, there's just so much satisfaction when you do something properly. Let's get in here and, and let me show you just how amazing this pastry is. So if you break it open, it's so light and flaky. And when you taste it, Mm. You get this really lovely crispiness and then all of a sudden it melts away like a cloud. Now it's just flaky and beautiful and you're left with all those spices and the potato and ah, it's so good. The best. guys i hope you enjoyed that video if you love cute things like this why not hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you'll always know when i'm making something cute and delicious like samosas or dumplings or things that aren't cute and delicious just delicious like noodles or you know custard tarts all sorts of things